Welcome to section 10.5 and 10.6. All right, gentle people, here we are at the second law of thermodynamics. Now, the previous sections have been building up to this idea, and that is what makes a reaction spontaneous or what makes a process spontaneous. And this is what the second law of thermodynamics is going to answer. The entropy of the universe is always going to increase. So in equation format, delta S of the universe has to be greater than or equal to zero. So remember that this is delta S universe. And my universe is made out of my system and my surroundings. So what this means is that if I have a process that increases the entropy of the universe, the reaction is spontaneous. If my process decreases the entropy of my universe, then this won't occur. This is a non-spontaneous process. If it's equal to zero, that means my reaction or my process can go in either way, depending if it is nudged one way or the other. Or in other words, I am at equilibrium and I am doing a reversible process. Now remember, both of these are dependent on my system and my surrounding. I have to look at both of these because I ultimately want to look at my universe. So let's look at my first quiz question. And that is, when you guys go out into the real world and you eat food and you chew your food, what you guys do is you take all these random foods and you produce DNA proteins, these very complex molecules. So if you're the system, what is the delta S for this system? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so you're the system. So let's think about the process we're doing. We're taking these random foods and we're turning them into DNA, proteins, and things that are very ordered and highly complex. So if I look at this, I'm going from random to ordered. And if I do that, going from random to ordered, well, my delta S, I'm bringing more order into the system, is going to be a negative number. I'm bringing about less chaos. So my delta S system is going to be less than zero. So off of this, let's think about the other thing that happens here. What would be the delta S of surroundings for this same process? So let's first take our delta S of our universe. And I know my delta S of my universe equals the delta S of my system plus the delta S of my surroundings. Now you exist, you are created, you are walking around this universe. So we can look at the second law of thermodynamics and note that this has to be greater to or equal to zero. Now, in the last slide, what we said was our delta S of our system, you eating food and becoming an ordered entity, well, we said that was going to be a negative process. So if we go ahead and write the rest of this equation out, what we see is that we have a negative number plus something gets us to a positive number. So that means for this process, delta S surroundings has to be a positive number. That's the only way that this top equation works. That's the only way I follow the second law of thermodynamics. So what I want you guys to understand is the implication of this. For me to make ordered things like a table, yourselves, or a complicated computer, anything where I create something, I have to bring about chaos in my surroundings. For me to create something that is ordered, something else in our universe has to go into disorder. That's the way our universe works. So let's quickly go ahead and talk about the effects of temperature. So here's what I want you guys to consider. I want you to consider a process where it is spontaneous in one place and non-spontaneous in somewhere else. So let's take the melting of ice. If I were to take a piece of ice and lay it on the ground in Santa Barbara, it would melt. However, if I take a piece of ice and lay it on the ground in Antarctica, it wouldn't melt. 
So the question is, is why is this spontaneous in one place and not the other? And this has to do with the temperature difference. So let's go ahead and tease this apart. So for me to have a spontaneous process, delta s of the universe has to be greater than zero. My universe is made from my system and my surroundings. So let's take a look at my system melting ice. So I'm gonna have my ice cube or solid water, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into liquid water. So if I were to look at the delta s of this process, going from a solid to a liquid, well, liquid is more disordered. So my delta s of my system here is going to be positive because I'm going to more disorder. So that takes care of my system. Now I wanna figure out the delta s of my surroundings. And this is a weird concept. The delta S of my surroundings basically means is I want to look at the chaos that occurs with whatever I don't care about. Now, this is a very bizarre thing to try to measure. But if we think about it a little bit, we can think about what is the chaos or disorder brought upon my surroundings and what does it do to? Well, the surroundings are going to be disordered mainly due to heat flow. And that means that if I suck out heat or I produce heat, it's going to change the particles around my system. So what I need to figure out is what's the delta H of my system. So in this case, going from solid water to liquid water, I can go ahead and look at my delta H of my system. And we see that this is an endothermic process. If it's an endothermic process, that means my delta H of my system is going to be positive. That means it's taking energy in. Now, where it gets that energy has to be from my surroundings. So my delta H of my surroundings has to be negative because my surroundings are gonna give heat to my ice to melt my ice. Now, if my surroundings are giving up thermal energy, that means they're cooling down. If they're cooling down, they have less kinetic energy, they're moving less, they're less disordered, they're becoming more ordered. So what happens here is my delta S of my surroundings is going to be negative. And it is going to go ahead and depend on the delta H of my system. So what I can say is the delta S of my surroundings is due to the heat flow of my system. And I'm going to put a negative sign to account for direction. Now what I can do is I can look at this equation again. So my system has a positive entropy. My surrounding has a negative entropy. And so if I add these two together, well, what you can see is that it could be positive or negative. Now, the one thing that is going to impact the delta S of my surrounding is the temperature at which I have this taken place. Santa Barbara has a rather mild climate. So the T or the temperature at which I melt my ice, it is fairly big. So if I take my delta H and divide it by a big number, what happens is my delta S of surroundings is going to be a small number. If this is small, then this dominates and I get a positive value. Then I go ahead and have a spontaneous process. The ice melts. However, let's think about what happens in Antarctica. In Antarctica, my delta H is the same, but in Antarctica, the temperature is really low. If I have a small number for T, well, my delta S of surroundings is going to be a bigger number. If this gets bigger and it becomes bigger than that positive, well, then I will have a negative delta S of universe. If I have a negative delta S of universe, that means a non-spontaneous process or the process won't proceed. So what you guys can see here is that temperature affects how big my delta S of surroundings is. If I make it too big, well, then it's going to dominate this equation 
and then I can change the spontaneity of my reaction. I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.